So what happens when you have a piece of exposed Romex like I do right here, which is right off my main panel? In this house, I actually had three instances exactly like this where somebody opened up the Romex, they took off the insulation of the neutral and hot. I believe they were trying to do continuity checks, but then just left them there. So I have exposed wires in multiple locations in the home and I need to get those fixed so I don't have a safety issue. The best solution that many pros would say is pull a new run of Romex, a home run all the way back to the panel. Now, although that is the best solution, you're gonna have brand new wire all the way back and no longer any exposed wires. It's probably not practical in some instances. So what's the option number two? Well, option number two would be to add a handy box, a junction box, so you're enclosing that exposed wire and then splicing that together. So now it's enclosed, it's safe, and that box is grounded. I will show you that instance of how to install a new handy box, but in this instance, and also common instances where maybe you were doing some work in your home, you drove a, a nail or a screw into your wall and you nicked the Romex, you damage the Romex, and now you have damaged Romex inside your wall, which you cannot bury a handy box or a junction box inside your wall. So what is that solution? A company called TE does make an approved splice kit that has two ends that will connect together. So you'll cut your damaged Romex, install those in the two halves, and then connect those halves together. And, and then that's what's gonna make the splice that's gonna be NAC approved and also can be put within a wall where you can drywall over it and it's not accessible. So first up, we'll install the handy box and then I'll show you how to install the splice kit on this piece of exposed Romex right behind me. So starting off, we'll take our non-contact voltage tester and confirm we have no power to this circuit. So now we're good to start the job and I have pre-made up the ground and also the clamps on the handy box prior to putting it and placing it on the ceiling. So I'm just going to take two small uh, spack screws here and I'll secure those to the ceiling, providing a secure hold for the handy box. Now we get a little different perspective so you can see inside where I have the left and right hand side of the Romex already in the handy box and tightened down with the clamps. Now I'm just going to clean up each of these pieces of Romex, taking off all the insulation, the paper inside, and having my hot neutral and ground all separated out. And then I'll be stripping off half inch on the ground and or sorry, the neutral and hot for the left and right hand sides, preparing for this WAGO 221 lever nut, which I really prefer over wire nuts. And that will just tie together my neutral side here. Now, if you don't have enough wire, you can make small extensions such as this. Now, since I do have a little extra wire, I'm just gonna go back to only using that one two pin to tie together that hot side. And then for the ground, since we will be grounding this metal handy box, I will need a three pin wago, which will tie the left and right hand side together and also that ground going to the handy box. So close that out, tuck in your ground, and now everything is completed and all we have to do is put on our cover. And this is basically the completed project to fix a damaged piece of Romex by isolating that into a handy box. So just like the junction box we confirmed, we have no power to the piece of Romex that we need to work on. Don't forget, it's always good to test on a known source. Now you know your voltage tester works and then confirm you have no power on the piece of Romex within question. So now we're safe to start the work. First up, I'm just going to free up this piece of Romex by cutting off these zip ties. That gives us a little bit more to work with. And then I'm going to cut the wires evenly, the ground and the hot. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean up these wires and prep them for the splice kit.
you're going to cut your wires. You're hot at an inch in length past the Romex and then a quarter inch shorter. So three quarters of an inch for your neutral and your ground. All right, so the way that this splice works is you're actually just gonna press the wires in without stripping them and they're and these little forks are gonna cut the insulation and make contact with the copper. Then you'll put this plastic top and you can see that has cradles in there. You'll put that on top and then you'll press that together and that is what's gonna press the wires down on those forks and make solid contact with each of the wires. That's also why you want to kind of preset your wires just to make it easier to line everything up, making sure your Romex goes through the middle, neutral and ground, meet up with their forks, and then the hot also is aligned. So then we'll put the cap on top and then press that down into place. Then once you've confirmed everything li is lined up, they actually show on the instructions to use channel locks to press those into the forks. Now here's all the wires lined up. The nice thing with this clear top is you can confirm that you have solid connections with the forks and they actually did cut the insulation. And then there's some mounting screws that will hold everything together. Get both of those started. Be careful not to strip these screws or you're going to extend out your project. Alright, so there is one side completed. Now I'll do the other side. So now with the two halves, all you'll do is mate those up. So that's it for the splice and you can see now we have solid Romex, solid Romex, everything contained within the splice so we have no exposed wires. If you wanna go the extra mile, I know some people would prefer to then wrap this with electrical tape just to be confident that's all gonna to stay together and it has another layer uh, there with the electrical tape, but that is gonna be up to you. you. This is approved just as it stands without the electrical tape. So I kept saying that this is approved and it meets NEC, which it does, but don't forget that your local municipality might have additional codes on top of NEC. And if this came up on a home inspection as a safety issue, which it was, just proactively check with the inspector and say, line number, whatever it is, if we fix this with a TE splice kit, would that satisfy that safety issue? Would it take it off the inspection report? Most likely, they're gonna be in favor of that, but at least you'll have that conversation before you do it yourself or pay for a professional to do that, which you should do if you do not feel safe working on electrical. Just be proactive with it so everybody's on the same page. Now, I'm just a DIYer. I'm not a licensed electrician. I'm just showing you my experience. I'm not telling you exactly what to do in your situation. Also, I'd like to hear your feedback, whether you're a DIYer, have you used this product? And if you're a professional, what do you think? Would you do this or no, you'd solve it with a different way. You would run that home run of Romex back or make sure you can install a junction box. I always appreciate your guys' feedback. So jump down in the comments and let me know what you think. Now, before you take off, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that now as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.